Okay, so we are supposed to now, we finished quote in the previous part. Let me just export, let me just see it into finance. And then I'm gonna uh, export the API key. Let me see if we have it in our history. I'll do control R here, control R, so that I can reverse search and I can say export. Yes, and I press enter. So what this does is it gets me this command, this thing back, right? So now uh, I've exported this API key and if I do flask run now, there shouldn't be any problem. There shouldn't be any problems, right? So there, let's see if this works or not. Okay, so we had entered a user called R with password one. And if you see this, this part is to do. So let's look at quote. If we go ahead and say you want to quote Google, Let's see what the stock price is right now. It's 1482.96. Okay. So the next step, what we want to do is we want to, uh, there's one small thing in quote that should be changed. It's, let me go to quote and change this. Uh, let's add a placeholder. So that's, it's looking empty over here, right? So let's add a placeholder called symbol. Placeholder equals symbol. So now what will happen is if I save this and if I go ahead here, and I refresh, we have symbol written as a placeholder. So if I look at Facebook, FB, and we see that the price uh, is $253 right now. Okay, this, seem, this seems to work. If we go to buy, uh, there's still to do here. So we should complete that. I'm gonna go here and to buy, where's buy? Let's control F, let's go to buy. And then inside of this, we can see there's an apology. Instead of doing that, we can say, uh, if request dot method, if request dot method equals equals post, then do something. Otherwise, we will do something else. Okay. But before uh, filling this in, I'm just going to pass it right now, and I'm going to just look at the get request. And if we have a get request, then we would return render template. You will return a template called buy .html. Okay. Meanwhile, you can uh, smash the like button, and I'll just take care of this HTML. So we'll byte.html and in byte.html what should happen it's going to be the same as quote.html but instead of so there's, there's going to be some there are going to be some things that should be changed here so this is this is correct layout quote should be changed to buy it's useful to sort of read every line and figure out what are the things that need to be changed so you should change this to buy and method is post okay fine good enough and symbol name is symbol and there's one more thing that should be here which is uh, the shares number of shares that you buy so i'm going to go here i'm going to press enter over here and here i'm going to say shares and the name of this thing is also going to be shares and i'm going to remove the autofocus from this thing because only one thing can be uh, sort of focused at a time so i'm just going to keep the symbol in autofocus and the shares should be should not be in autofocus basically so if i save this now Okay, now if I go here and look at buy, well, we enter username and password, R and one in this case, let me go to buy, and we have symbol and shares, perfect. Now once this is posted, we must do something with this, right? So what should we do here? We've passed, um, we just passed everything. So we're, not, we're gonna do something. So first of all, what we're gonna do is, we want to check if these two fields are empty or not. So we're gonna use the is provided function that we had created in the previous parts. So I'm going to see, I'm going to see something like this. Find missing errors equals is underscore provided. Okay. And I'm going to say symbol. So what happens here is the name of the symbol, this, this field is symbol. And the name of this field is shares. So I want to essentially look for, uh, look if they're provided or not. So I'm going to say is provided symbol or is provided. Uh, what is here? Shares. Okay. So if we find some missing errors then we must display those errors right missing errors then we should display those errors so how should we do that we should return find missing errors okay otherwise if now, now one more thing that should, that should be checked is uh, you enter the symbol and you enter the shift for example if we enter facebook and we enter uh, let's say 12 you should also check that this is this is a valid number so you can also say 12.5 or something like that right and it could also happen that this this is invalid. So these two things, you have entered something that are missing, but some it could be invalid. So I can do something like this. First of all, I'm going to check if this field, the 
uh, shares field essentially is an integer. This should be an integer. So you can't buy 12.2 number of shares, it should be 12. So to do that, I'm gonna use a function called is digit. So I'm gonna get the, from the form I'm gonna get shares, and then I'm gonna check if this value that I get back is a digit or not. If the string that I get back essentially is a string or, is a digit or not. If it's a digit, then I'm gonna return apology, apology invalid number of shares. Okay. Otherwise, no, it's okay. No, but now I still need to get the symbol. So I get the axis of the symbol and check if the symbol is accurate. So I can say I would use the lookup function somewhere. Okay, and if the lookup function returns none then I would return some apologies. I would return the apology that the symbol is invalid. So the symbol, I could say invalid symbol. So how do I do that? First of all, there's one thing that I need to change here. Let's make this, oh, just uh, use double quotes here. Let me try. Okay, it's not working. So just say invalid number of shares. I'm gonna say invalid number of shares okay now the symbol can be retrieved from requested form but get and symbol dot um dot what i want to just uppercase this okay because the lookup function uh, probably takes in an uppercase thing so i'm going to say stock equals lookup symbol and then what i'm going to do is if i'm going to check if stock is none so now i'm looking up that symbol if stock is none then i'm going to return the apology invalid symbol okay cool now after i've done all the error checkings right i've checked if there's invalid number of shares if the, the symbol is invalid whatever so then after having done that what i can do is i can execute the queries right so i can execute something so i can you know what i have to do is first of all uh, let's look at what queries do we execute. If we go into finance.db, we can see that we have a users table here, right? And, okay, the cash, initial cash is $10,000. So, uh, what I have to do here is, first of all, I need to subtract this amount first. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So, I'm going to do it execute. I'm going to find out. And there's one more, one more error that can occur here. So, one more error condition, the... the the error is sort of uh, when you select something, let's say you select cash from users, where ID is the current ID, right? So the current user ID is the ID that I, is the essentially the row that I want. I don't want every single user, uh, the cash of every single user, I just only want the, the user ID, the sessions user ID. That ID I want to fill in in this query. Okay, and then I get back some rows here. So I'm going to say rows equals if you execute this. And if rows uh, is, you can do that if rows is none, but I'm going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm just simply going to say, you no, know, I'm going to get the cache by saying rows of zero. There's going to be only one row. And I'm going to look at the cache field inside this. Okay, so I'm just going to change this to this. It's to be consistent every single time. I'm using double quotes. Okay, once I get the cache, I can find out that. I can just say updated cash. I can say updated cash equals cash minus shares times stock of price. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is let's say if updated cash is less than zero. Then I can return an apology. Can't afford. Okay, then I can say, let's see if this works or not. Save this. Run this. What's the internal server? Because it says invalid number of shares. Return apology. Return apology. Invalid number of shares.
to save this okay Control C Control L let's rask run this okay let me go back here let's say R and 1 Kind of Facebook and one. Oops, let's enter one. Let's see what happens now. Okay, shares is not defined. So I can say shares. So I want to say shares equals request or form dot get shares and convert that into an integer. So here I go, convert this into an integer, int, and this should now probably work. Let's see, if I run finance.tv, if I run finance, flask run, so run finance, okay, r1, let's log in. I want to buy something let's buy Amazon or two stocks or one stock of Amazon okay the internal server error why because let's see here it says select cache where ID equals one um, the return statement okay we have to return render uh, okay, we we'll return redirect this finally to this place. Okay, so what we're doing here is taking in the number of shares, the number of uh, number of shares in the symbol, and then calculating the updated cache, and then you know selecting that cache from the users table, and then what you want to do is you want to up if if everything goes all right. We also have to update the table called users, right? So you would say db dot execute. You would say update users. No, we know that there is no error at this point because otherwise we would have returned an apology. Update users set cache equal to updated cache. updated underscore cache let's do this and then we can say where the ID equals colon ID and then I can just enter uh, the respective fields like so so updated cache equals updated cache what this means is that this field over here gets the value of updated cache right so what the value is you're gonna set that in and and you know substitute that over here Okay, so then we have to say that the ID equals session of user ID, right? That's where the ID is stored in. And your session is user ID field. Then after that, you can redirect this and let's see if this works now. It's control C, control L, and then let's um, run flask open this up and then r1 login let's go to buy so now if you look at the php light admin here okay let me just go back and double click on finance.db let's see users instead of users we have uh, ten thousand dollars cash right so if i go ahead and if i want to okay there's one error here instead of code this should be buy I'm gonna go here, set uh, buy, and change this to buy. Save it, then Control C, Control L, and run Flask. Run. Let's see if this works now. R and one. Let's go to buy. Okay. Let's say we want one stock of Amazon. Amazon one. Let's buy this. Okay. After we bought that. It says 400, which means we are probably okay. 400 is to do. It says set cash equals this. 
Okay, so let's see what happens here. Okay, now if we refresh this table, you can see that the cache has been updated. Okay, so you can see what happened here was we had ten thousand dollars, and we would, uh, let's say, we bought an, a stock of Amazon, which costs this much, right? If ten thousand, you subtract this, you probably get yeah, this, right? Mm, okay, makes sense. All right, so this is where I'm going to leave this video. And the next one, I'm going to just, we need to do some more things. Like we need to create another table called a history table in which we would have all the transaction histories. So that's pretty much.